from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering Veritas Vision 2017. Brought to you by Veritas. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage, and we're covering. Day one, this is day one of two day coverage of Veritas Vision, hashtag Vitas Vision. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Zach Boson is here, he's the Director of Information Governance Solutions uh, at Veritas, and Anna Simpson is a Distinguished Systems Engineer at Veritas, which Anna means, means you know where all the skeletons are buried and <laughs> <laughs> how to put the pieces back together again. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for Thank coming you. on. Thank you. Okay, so let's start with, um, We've heard a little bit today about information governance. Zach, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the, every half a decade or so, every decade there's a, a new thing. Right. And GDPR is now the new thing. Uh, but what's the state of information governance today? How would you describe it? Yeah, I mean, I think the primary problem that organizations are, are still trying to fight off is exponential data growth. Uh, we release research every year called the Data Genomics Index, and what came back this past year is that data growth has continued to accelerate, as a matter of fact, 49% year over year. So this problem isn't going anywhere, and now it's actually being magnified by the fact that data is being stored not only in the data center on-premises, but across the multi-cloud. So information governance, digital compliance, is all about trying to understand that data, control that data, put the appropriate policies against it, uh, and that's really what we try to do in helping customers. I mean, I always wonder, like how you even measure data. I guess you could measure you know, capacity that leaves the factory, but even, there's so much data that's created that's not even persisted. Like we don't even know, I think, how fast data is growing. And it feels like, and I wonder if you guys agree or have any data suggested, it feels like the curve is reshaping. I remember when we were talking to McAfee and Brynjolfsson, it feels like the, the curve is just going even more exponential. I mean, what's your sense? I, uh, that's typically what we see, and then you have IoT data coming online you know, faster and faster, and, and it really is kind of a vertical shot up. Uh, and all different types of new file types. The, you know, one of the other really interesting insights is that unknown file types jumped 30 to 40%. And so things that we don't even recognize with our file analysis tools today are, are jumping off the charts. So it used to be the PST was the, you know, the, the little nagging. I mean, it's looked trivial compared to what we face today, Anna. But so what's your, what's your role as a, as, a, as a systems engineer, distinguished systems engineer? How do you spend your time and, and what are you seeing out there? Yeah, so I definitely spend my time meeting with customers uh, around the world, speaking to them about information governance, particularly around sort of risk and mitigation. Risk mitigation these days, uh, you know, in terms of the issues we see in information governance, you know, data privacy is a big one. I'm sure you've been hearing about you know GDPR quite a bit today already. So that's definitely a hot topic and something that our customers are concerned about. Are they ringing you up saying, hey, get in here, I need to talk to you about GDPR, or is it more are you going in and saying, hey, uh, you ready for GDPR? How's that conversation going? It's, it's definitely a combination between the two. Um, I think there is definitely a lot of denial out there. A lot of people don't understand that it will apply to them, um, particularly, ob obviously, if they are storing or processing data which belongs to an EU resident. Uh, you know, containing their personal data. So I think organizations are either in that denial phase or otherwise they're probably very, almost too, too aware. So they've probably started a, a project, done some assessment, and then you know, they're, they're either in the panic mode of we have to remediate all these issues before May next year. So, so what's the bell curve look like? I mean, let's make it simple, three categories. One is we got this nailed. <laughs> That's got to be tiny. Yeah. The fat middle, which is, we get it, we know it's coming, we got to allocate some budget, let's go, versus kind of clueless. What's the, what's the bell curve look like? I would say that there's 2% of companies yeah. maybe, maybe think they have it nailed. Definitely single digits, low single digits. I think maybe another 30% at least understand the implications and are trying to at least put a plan in place, and the rest, 66% or so, still aren't very aware of what GDPR means for their business. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Anna, could you take us inside? What's Veritas's role in helping customers get ready for GDPR? Uh, we talked to one of Veritas's you know, consulting partners today, and you know, it's, it's a big issue, it crosses, I said, you know, usually five to 10 different budget areas, so what, what, what's the piece that Veritas leads, and what's the part that you need to pull in other partners for? Sure thing. Um, so in terms of our approach, we have what we refer to as a wheel, which sort of attacks different parts of the GDPR, so, so various articles. It sort of steps you through 
the, the sort of processes that you need to be compliant. Um, so, you know, things like locating personal data, being able to search that data, minimizing what you have, because GDPR is really dictating that you, cannot, you can no longer data hoard because you can only keep data which has business value. Uh, and then further downstream, it's obviously protecting the data that has business value and then monitoring that over time. Uh, from a Veritas approach perspective, we're tying those articles obviously to some of our products, some of our solutions. And then there's also definitely a services component around that as well. So you know, when you think about e-discovery or regulatory requirements, it's you know, when the regulators come in, generally they're not necessarily going to be questioning the tools, they're going to be questioning how you're using those tools to be compliant. So it is sort of a combination between you know, tools and services. And then we're also you know, partner, partnering with you know, other consulting companies on that process piece as well. Yeah. Zach, in the keynote this morning, there's a lot of discussion of there's, there's dark data out there and yeah. we need to shine a light on it. Um, I have to imagine that's a big piece of this. Why don't you bring us up to speed? What, what are some of the new products that were announced that kind of help with this whole GDR, right, GDPR yeah, problem? Right, into that point, right? 52% of data is dark, 33% is rot, 15% is mission critical. Uh, today we announced 23 new connectors for the Veritas information map. This is our immersive visual uh, data mapping tool that really highlights where your stale and orphan and non-business critical data is across the entire enterprise. So new connectors with Microsoft Azure, uh, Google Cloud Storage, uh, Oracle databases, uh, and so forth and so on. There, there's quite a number uh, that we're adding into the fold. And so that really gives organizations better visibility into where risk may be hiding and allows you to shine that light and interrogate that data in ways that you couldn't do previously because you didn't have those types of insights. And then, also, we heard about a so risk analyzer. Yeah, that's right. So we just recently announced the uh, Veritas Risk Analyzer. This is a free online tool where anyone can go to veritas.com slash risk analyzer, take a folder of their data, and try out our brand new integrated classification engine. We've got preset policies for GDPR, so you drop in uh, your files and we'll run the classification in record speed, and you'll, it'll come back with where PII is, how risky that folder was, tons of great insights. And so, so it's, so it's identifying the PII, mm -hmm. sort of how much there is, and, and what, how siloed it is? Are you sort of measuring that? Or so, what are you actually measuring there? So we're actually giving you a risk score. Yeah. So when we're analyzing risk, you might find one individual piece of PII, or you might find much more dense PII. And so depending on uh, the number of files and the types of files, we'll actually give you a different risk tolerance. And so what we're doing with the risk analyzer is giving you a preview, or just a snapshot, of the types of capabilities that Veritas can bring to that discussion. Okay, so who do you typically talk to? Is it the GC, is it the head of compliance, or chief risk officer, um, all of the above? But yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's definitely or, all of the above. Some um, person who has a combination of those responsibilities, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, so it's usually, um, you know, if we're talking GDPR specifically, you know, it's usually information security, compliance, legal, um, and particularly in organizations now, we're definitely, definitely seeing more data privacy officers, and they're the ones that truly understand sort of what these issues are, GDPR or other you know, personal data privacy regulations. So okay, let's say I'm the head of the compliance, security, risk, information, governance, I wear that hat. <laughs> And I say I'm new to the job, and I, and, I, and, I, and I call you guys and I say, I need help. Where do I start? Obviously you're going to start with some kind of assessment. Maybe you have a partner to help you do that. I can run my little, little risk analyzer, sort of lead gen machine, and, and, <laughs> and, and that's good, but that's just scratching the start. I, I know I have a problem. Mm -hmm. Where do we start? What are the critical elements, and, and how long is it going to take me to get to where I need to be? Yeah, so I think visibility is obviously the first step, um, which Zach already kind of spoke to. Um, you, know, you really have to be able to understand what you have to then be able to make some educated decisions about that. So generally that's where we see you know, the gap in most organizations today, and that, that's particularly around unstructured data, because if it's structured, generally you have some sort of search tools that you can quickly identify what's in, within there. And, right, okay. And to add on just that, we, you actually have 24 hours, we can bring back 100 million items using the information map, so you can get a really clean snapshot in just one day to start to understand where some of that risk may be hiding. Yeah. So, 
Let's unpack that a little bit. You're surveilling, what, all of my data stores? And, and it's because you see that because you've got the backup data, is that right? So or? the backup data is one portion of it. Uh, the rest is really coming from these 23 new connectors into those different data stores and extracting and sweeping out that metadata, which allow us to make more impactful decisions about where we think personal data may be, uh, and then you can take further downstream actions using the rest of our toolkit. And what about distributed data on laptops, mobile devices, IOT devices, is that part of the scope or is that coming down the road or is it a problem to be solved? So it's, it's a little out of scope uh, for, for what we do. Um, on the laptop, desktop side of things, we do have e-discovery platform, formerly known as Clearwell, um, which does have the ability to go out and search um, those types of devices and then you could be doing sort of downstream review of that data, you know, or you know, potentially moving it elsewhere. Um, but yeah, it's definitely some, a place I guess we don't really play right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you had any other comments there. Uh, well, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Start yeah. within your enterprise. But I mean, this has always been a challenge. We were talking off camera about FRCP and email archiving, and you know, it was, and, and I always thought the, the backup, you know, the, the backup co company was in a good spot to analyze that data, but then there's the but. But even these are backed up kind of, you know, laptops and, and, and mobile devices, but do you see the risk and exposures in PII really at, at the corporate level or are attorneys going to go after the processes around distributed data and devices and, and, and the like? I think anything is probably fair game at this point, given that GDPR hasn't yeah. come in, you know, it's not being enforced yet, so we'll have to see how that plays out. I think the biggest gap right now, or the biggest pain point for organizations is unstructured data. Because mm. you know, it kind of becomes a dumping ground and people come and go from organizations and you just have no visibility into the data that's being stored there. And generally, you know, people like to store things on corporate networks because it gets backed up, because it doesn't get deleted, and it's usually things that probably should not be stored there, so. Well, it does sound like, if I think back to 2006, 2007 timeframe with Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, which basically said that electronic information is now admissible. And it was a high profile cases, I think, uh, I, I don't want to name the name, because I'll get it wrong, but they, they couldn't produce the data in court, the judge you know, penalized them, and then they came back and said, oh, we found some more data, we found some more data, we found some more data. Just an embarrassing thing, there's a hundred million dollar fine, and that hit the press. So what organizations did, and I'm sure Anna, you could you know, fill in the gaps, is, but they basically said, listen, it's an impossible problem, so we're going to go after email archiving. Yeah. We're going to put the finger in the dike there and try to figure the rest of this stuff out later. And what happened is that plaintiff's attorneys would go after their processes and procedures and attack those. And if you didn't have those in place, you were really in big trouble. So what people did is try to put those in place. With GDPR, I'm not sure that is going to fly. <laughs> it's almost binary. Yeah. If somebody says, I want you to delete my, my data, and you can't prove it, I guess that's process-wise, you're in trouble, in theory. We'll see how it holds up and and what the fines look like, but it sounds, it sounds like it's substantially more onerous from what, what we understand, is that right? Yeah, I would 100% agree. So, you know, from an e-discovery standpoint, you know, there's proportionality and, you know, what's reasonable, you know, relative to, you know, the cost of e-discovery and things like that. I actually don't think that that is going to come into play with GDPR because the fines are so substantial. So, you know, really, it, you know, I don't know what, what, what would be considered unreasonable to go out and locate data, so. Right. Zach, Zach, you have to help us end this on, on an up note, so. <laughs> yeah, the, the onerous, uh, uh, wait, I wanted to keep yeah, going yeah. into the abyss. Uh, so, so <laughs> you know, we, we talk about the exponential growth of data, uh -huh. and we've been saying, you know, big data was supposed to be that bit flip of, you know, turn it for, oh my God, I need to store it and do everything to, I need to be able to harness it and mm -hmm. take advantage of it. So is GDPR an opportunity for customers to you know, not only get their arms around their information, but you know, extract new value from yeah, it? Absolutely, yeah. it's all about good data hygiene, yeah. it's about good information governance, it's about understanding where your most valuable assets are, focusing on those assets and getting the most value you can from them. Get rid of the junk, you don't need that, it's just going to get you into trouble, and that's what Veritas can help you do. Yeah, so a lot of unknowns. Um, I guess the message is get your house in order, call some <laughs> experts. I mean, I call a lot of experts, obviously Veritas, 
Uh, we had PwC on earlier today. A number of folks in your ecosystem, I'm sure, can help. So, guys, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and scaring the crap out of us. <laughs> All right. Really a pleasure having you. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back for our wrap right after this short break. <laughs>